Namaste and welcome to the video course on watershed management. In today's lecture in module number 3, lecture number 11, we will discuss the rainwater harvesting systems and roof catchments. So, some of the topics covered today will be rainwater harvesting system, roof water catchment system, urban water scarcity, rainwater harvesting system cost, safety and water quality and maintenance and uh, two case studies. Some of the important keywords for today's lecture include rainwater harvesting system, roof water catchment and urban water scarcity. So, in the last lecture we were discussing about the rainwater harvesting systems. So, we have seen that the rainwater harvesting systems can be of three type, one is the rooftop based, second one is the open space like uh, what is there in um, say open areas, gardens and other place and then third type can be the watershed based. So, uh, depending upon the area where we have to go for the rainwater harvesting system, we can have um, one of these or an integrated approach by considering either rooftop and uh, the open space or the combining all this within the perspective of a watershed management within the watershed. So, we have seen the details about the various hydrological, hydrogeological aspects and then also the artificial recharge aspects as far as the especially rainwater harvesting in open areas and um, the watershed related issues we have seen in the last lecture. So, one of the important aspect of rainwater has, uh, harvesting especially in cities in water scarce areas like um, arid and semi arid regions islands and coast region is rooftop based rainwater harvesting. So, the various design related issues we have already uh, discussed uh, as far as the rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, today we will concentrate on the rooftop rainwater harvesting. So, rooftop rainwater harvesting as we discussed in the last lecture, it is a technique through which rainwater is captured from roof catchments and st stored in reservoirs. So, here uh, in the rainwater harvesting system we are uh, harvesting the rainwater either from the roof or the open space or on a watershed scale. So, as far as rooftop catchment is concerned, so we consider rooftop as the catchment and we capture this water and collect it and then either store it for the direct use. So, harvested rainwater can be stored in storage tanks to meet the household needs directly. So, especially in a dry region, arid region or semi arid regions or coastal regions or islands. So, where water problem is there or we can also recharge to the subsurface I mean as ground water. So, it will be recharged to the ground water system uh, by adopting the artificial recharge techniques. So, it is other than the natural recharge. So, we, we are uh, providing specific structures so that there will be more recharge so called artificial recharge will take place. So, the main objective of rooftop based rainwater harvesting is to make water available for future use. So, as we discussed the same the rainfall is concerned it may be available only for few months say in India say for example, 3 to 4 months most of the places and then the spatial variation. So, whatever whenever rainfall takes place we are trying to capture it through harvesting and then we so that we can use it for future use uh, say in the dry season uh, so that sufficient water will be available. So, capturing and storing rainwater for the use is particularly important in dry land as I already mentioned hilly regions where uh, say immediately after rainfall all the water drains out due to the high slope then urban and coastal regions. So, coastal regions especially say in ground water uh, uh, say uh, wherever the aquifer is affected by the, the sea water ingress, there we can directly harvest this uh, say rain water and uh, then directly use from the rooftop or we can uh, recharge to reduce the sea water ingress. So, now in alluvial areas say for example, if we can recharge, so other than directly utilize if we can recharge and then um, say if there is a rise of uh, water table say by 1 meter, then 
say the pumping cost can be reduced by 0.4 kilowatts per hour. So, that way it will be also uh, energy saving will take place. So, if we can recharge and then in the aquifer system when the water table rises, then uh, definitely there is uh, the saving of the, uh, the energy. So, that, that you, what, what will be used for uh, the pumping purpose. So, uh, within the perspective of rainwater harvesting, we have uh, already seen uh, the various uh, aspects of rainwater harvesting. So, now within the perspective of rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting, so why we need to go for rooftop based rainwater harvesting? So, some of the needs are listed here uh, to meet the ever increasing demand for water. So, especially in city regions and uh, say the, the arid and semi arid regions and with the increase in population and uh, industrial developments the water increase is going up. So, that way uh, we can uh, say other than the natural recharge either we are recharging further uh, through artificial means or we are storing the rain, uh, rain water directly. Then to reduce the runoff which chokes storm drains. So, uh, you can see that especially in urban areas like uh, uh, cities like Mumbai uh, and other coastal cities uh, in most of the monsoon season there is um, flooding problem. So, if we can say reduce the, the runoff coming from the, the urban areas by uh, means of say rainwater harvesting, then we can see that um, the, the whatever the runoff coming through the, the drains will be reduced and that way uh, we can reduce the flooding problem. So, th that way to avoid the flooding of roads and other areas, so that will be an indirect advantage of uh, this uh, rainwater harvesting. Then to augment the groundwater storage and control decline of uh, water levels. So, as we discussed, so when we are doing the recharge other than the natural recharge through artificial means, when we are increasing the recharge, then the groundwater uh, levels goes up. So, that is another need. Then to reduce groundwater pollution. So, the rainwater is one of the purest form of water. So, uh, without uh, any kind of pollution. So, if we can recharge that water to the groundwater, then the whatever the polluted groundwater will be, the pollution will be uh, decreased. Then to improve the quality of uh, groundwater, so that way we can improve the quality of groundwater. Then to reduce the soil erosion, especially say in um, open areas or uh, watershed, if we can provide uh, the various structures for artificial recharge then uh, we can see that uh, soil erosion can be reduced and moreover say when the uh, say uh, the water flowing through the uh, say coming from the rooftop is reduced through means of uh, re rainwater harvesting then also the the flow will be runoff will be reduced so that will also uh, give the advantage of uh, reducing the soil erosion then to supplement domestic water requirement during summer drought etc so if you are directly storing the rainwater in tanks or um, uh, say other structures then we can directly utilize that water for the uh, drought period or summer season uh, and um, so th uh, that way uh, say two aspect one is directly storing uh, in tanks or uh, other structures or uh, we can recharge so th so that way there are number of uh, say, uh, say advantages and um, these are some of the important needs as far as the uh, rooftop based rainwater harvesting is concerned so, as I mentioned, uh, the rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting can be of two types. So, the methodology can be so directly uh, we can store store in uh, tanks. So, you can see that um, whatever uh, directly coming from the the building, we can collect through the gutters, the pipelines, and then directly say after filtration, we can uh, store it in a tank as shown in this photograph and then uh, directly we can utilize. And the second way is say the storage in groundwater reservoir. So, what we can do? We can collect the, the rainwater and then uh, say after some filtration, we can pass into uh, say various recharge structures like dug well, bore well, recharge pit, pit shaft, trenches, etcetera and that can be put into this so that uh, so it will be recharging to the aquifer system so that is uh, another way uh, uh, as far as the the rooftop based rainwater harvesting is concerned and then uh, say depending upon the area we can go for both i mean an integrated system uh, say uh, some part of the water can be collected in tanks and some water can be uh, used for recharging to the aquifer system 
So, an integrated approach is also possible as far as rooftop rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, now uh, say we, we have already discussed the uh, rainwater harvesting system and uh, its design aspects in the last lecture. So, very similar way as far as rooftop rainwater harvesting system is also concerned. Uh, say we have to see how much area is there from which water can be collected and then how is the rainfall pattern and then uh, how much is the and the collection efficiency or uh, depending upon the runoff coefficient we can identify how much water can be collected for a uh, given uh, rooftop area. So, uh, how the question how much uh, water can be collected as far as rooftop rainwater harvesting system is concerned. So, this depends upon the collection efficiency as I mentioned. So, how efficiently the rainfall can be collected uh, depends on several considerations such as what kind of roof, what kind of roof material, what is the inclination of the roof uh, etcetera and then uh, what, are, what are the rainfall conditions, what is the intensity of rainfall, what is the duration of the rainfall. Uh, like that and then weather conditions like what is the temperature, what is the humidity. So, depending on all these conditions uh, say the collection efficiency uh, varies from place to place uh, and also it depends uh, on the season. And then uh, normally say for a normal conditions uh, we can see that um, about uh, 80 percent uh, collection efficiency we can achieve uh, depending upon the uh, specific design. So, if say for example, if 1000 mm rainfall is annually available we can store uh, say we can think of uh, harvesting about 800 uh, millimeter of this uh, rainfall uh, for a uh, given uh, say uh, the rooftop catchment. And then as I mentioned uh, the, the, the collection if the, the how much can be collected depends upon the rainfall reliability. So, that means average rainfall pattern and what is the intensity duration uh, etcetera. So, then uh, say as far as a catchment is concerned a rooftop is concerned we can uh, find out total quantity of water that can be collected uh, in cubic meter is equal to rooftop area say in square meter multiplied by average rainfall uh, say annual rainfall uh, into collection efficiency. So, this this equation gives how much water can be collected as far as rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting system is concerned. So, you can see that uh, see if collection efficiency say for example, if it is say 80 percent or 0.8 then the uh, say how much collection depends upon the rooftop area and then uh, rainfall uh, availability uh, say as far as that particular location is concerned. So, we can prepare say uh, depending upon rainfall pattern and uh, how much uh, roof area. So, that is uh, constant. So, that way we can identify when we design a rooftop based rainwater harvesting system as yes, this much water can be uh, either collected in tanks or this much water will be available for uh, the uh, artificial uh, recharge. So, that way we can have a table say for various rooftop areas and so for very various rainfall annual rainfall conditions. So, if you assume a collection efficiency of 80 percent we can prepare a table like this and directly we can identify how much volume of water say in cubic meter can be uh, uh, harvested say uh, for the given uh, rooftop area. So, that way we can directly uh, identify. So, now uh, say before going further as far as the various design uh, aspects of rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting system. So, let us have a brief look into the urban water problems. Uh, so, what are the uh, solution uh, strategies? So, many of the urban cities especially say for example, in uh, uh, developing countries like India uh, say cities like um, uh, Delhi, Ch Chennai all these cities have water scarcity problem. So, uh, say especially in the areas uh, where the directly the water is uh, obtained from uh, the groundwater system. So, this uh, uh, say rain the rooftop based rainwater harvesting system is a good technology as far as the to, to solve the water related problems. So, uh, we can uh, use uh, say the solution strategies as far as solution strategy is concerned we can identify the potential zones in over exploited areas 
and uh, design and implement suitable site specific roof water and surface water harvesting structures uh, to raise the ground water table. Say uh, this is very much possible in places like Chennai, Delhi, Chandigarh etcetera where uh, so much of ground water is used uh, for the uh, uh, domestic and industrial uh, purposes. Then as another strategy we can promulgate uh, roof and surface water harvesting techniques through community rainwater harvesting uh, methods. So, uh, it is uh, say the initiative should be a community based initiative. So, all the people should uh, come in uh, say come together so that um, uh, say a village or city based uh, say for particular city based uh, or urban uh, watershed based uh, uh, scheme we can develop uh, so that uh, uh, we can that will be a solution uh, as far as the urban water scarcity is concerned. Uh, then uh, sustain existing water supply scheme by artificial recharge. So, as I mentioned say so, uh, for example, due to the, uh, the efforts of various governments and um, non-government organizations in places like uh, Delhi and Chennai uh, in the last few years. Uh, say huge efforts were put as far as the rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, that has uh, shown good uh, impacts as far as the water availability is concerned especially cities like uh, Delhi and Chennai. So, that way uh, we can sustain existing water supply scheme by artificial recharge and then introduce water harvesting structures on unpolluted storm water drains, open areas, parks and playgrounds. So, that uh, so, other than the normal infiltration taking place, uh, recharge taking place to the aquifer system, uh, we are increasing the recharge through various means. So, that way uh, we can uh, say increase the water availability uh, and that will be a solution strategy as far as urban water scarcity is concerned. And then use stagnant water for uh, recharge purposes in relatively low lying areas. Uh, store flood water in appropriate locations and construct suitable recharge structures in water logging areas. So, uh, if you can store water for uh, say with uh, some pressure, then you can see that um, more recharge will be taking place to the aquifer system. Uh, so, that uh, that, that will increase the water table, ground water table and that can be another solution strategy as far as urban uh, water scarcity is concerned. Then uh, we can introduce site specific artificial recharge structures on wide roads. Uh, which uh, become waterways during uh, heavy down power uh, in the monsoon season. So, actually this technique uh, has been implemented by uh, Delhi government uh, in many uh, parts of uh, De Delhi state, uh, especially on, on road sides. So, that has been found to be uh, very successful. So, uh, since a lot of area is there and that area we can stop the water and then allow to recharge to the to the uh, uh, ground water. So, that way the ground water table uh, level will be uh, increased. So, then uh, uh, some of the other solution strategies include uh, convert dry tube wells and bore wells into recharge wells. So, you can see that um, due to overdrafting of the uh, water from the ground water system many of the tube wells and bore wells goes, goes into dry condition. So, that tube wells and bore wells we can utilize for uh, utilize as recharge well and then design projects for uh, recycling and reuse of waste water. So, recycling and reuse and water conservation we will be discussing in detail uh, in the later part of this course. Uh, so, uh, we can also uh, say use the various techniques as far as recycling and reuse is concerned. Then uh, construct site specific artificial recharge structures like uh, percolation pits, uh, duck come bore wells mini artificial aquifer systems, trench come percolation pits, percolation ponds, uh, recharge wells etcetera. So, then another important aspect is that um, say uh, rain is uh, say obviously say as per uh, say average annual rainfall condition most of the time most of the years it will be available and uh, uh, area is there of rooftop as a catchment is available. So, only thing is that um, people have to actively do this rainwater harvesting schemes at various locations. So, that uh, uh, many times people uh, do not understand or do not know what are the advantages of such systems. So, it is always better to go for a mass awareness programs either government level or non-government of uh, say organization levels or education institutions level. So, that uh, mass awareness comes uh, more people will be interested in this uh, kinds of rooftop rainwater harvesting or uh, other types of rainwater harvesting uh, systems. Then make uh, roof water harvesting as a people movement. So, actually uh, say uh, this is what is happened in uh, 
Chennai and other uh, uh, regions in Tamil Nadu. So, uh, due to uh, so the various um, government rules and regulations plus uh, say a lot of um, awareness program mass movement has been taken place in the last um, uh, few years uh, in Chennai and other regions in Tamil Nadu and then we can see that uh, most of the, uh, the uh, say houses or most of the uh, land uh, areas where rainwater harvesting is possible many locations it has been done. So, that way if we can make the uh, roof, rooftop or rainwater harvesting as a people movement then uh, it will be a huge success. Then commence and uh, uh, sustain training programs for executives of government and non-government organizations and strengthen ongoing awareness projects. So, uh, say many of the say agencies uh, say, uh, say which are not so familiar or um, not experts in the area of rainwater harvesting uh, say various uh, uh, agencies who are expert in this um, uh, rainwater harvesting schemes can give training programs and then uh, um, uh, say give uh, seminars, lectures, etcetera. So, that this awareness can be uh, improve uh, say uh, can be sp spread to the all the public and the government organizations. So, that will lead to the rainwater harvesting uh, schemes. So, uh, that way uh, if you when it becomes a people movement definitely the efforts will be much much uh, better. So, now uh, let us see what are the important design consideration uh, considerations as far as rooftop rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, uh, as we have already seen it depends upon how much is the area, how much is the rainfall and how much is the uh, collection efficiency. So, uh, so, based upon these three important uh, aspects uh, some of the design considerations I have listed here. So, first one is area contributing for runoff. So, that means the harvestable uh, rooftop uh, catchments uh, of the area. Then uh, rainfall pattern for the area. So, um, whether it is 4 months or 8 months or how, how many how many months uh, per year and how many days uh, in a year uh, and then uh, what is the intensity of rainfall. And then collection efficiency. So, as I mentioned whether it is uh, say we can achieve uh, about 80 percent in uh, as far as rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting is concerned and but when it goes to um, say open space it may go to 50 to 60 percent and then in uh, say watershed based uh, say rural rainwater harvesting is concerned it can it may be 30 to 50 percent. So, like that uh, say the collection uh, efficiency varies. Then uh, demand for water and type of use. So, uh, say, uh, say in especially arid and semi arid regions, so where the rainfall is uh, very less, then uh, whatever uh, rainfall is there, we can uh, go for harvesting it and then um, we can uh, um, say improve the water availability. So, this is a typical example what is done by um, uh, Mr. Rajendra Singh in uh, Rajasthan villages, many of the Rajasthan villages where uh, massive rainwater harvesting is uh, done. Uh, so, that the, the uh, say even for arid regions or semi arid regions, uh, we can make it uh, uh, the water availability uh, better. And then another important aspect is the type of use, type of use means whether the water which we are harvesting say especially rooftop rain, rain water what we are harvesting whether it is using for domestic purpose like uh, drinking and other purposes or whether um, uh, it we are using only for agriculture purposes or for recharge purposes. So, like that uh, depending upon the type of use uh, we have to um, have uh, better schemes uh, say for example, if we are going for um, the uh, the um, uh, say um, uh, domestic purposes then we, we, we need the pure uh, water. So, that way we have to go through a uh, cycle of um, say filtration then um, uh, say, um, uh, say uh, uh, disinfection either to using um, say chlorination or ultraviolet uh, systems and then maybe we have to again further go for uh, boiling. So, like that uh, depending upon the type of use uh, the design considerations uh, will change. Then another issue is how say for say for example, in a city like Mumbai when where we are having uh, rain for uh, 4 months then uh, say we, we can decide for how many more months we want to either store water for the, the, the dry months uh, dry period. So, uh, we, we have to decide for how many months we have to go for storage. 
then uh, storage related issues. So, as I mentioned uh, whether we are going to store in uh, say tanks like ferro cement tanks or syntax tanks or what kind of tanks. So, depending upon that uh, we have to do the design. Then uh, we have to uh, see the water quality issues. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, say if the roof is concrete then uh, the water will be much better, but if it is asbestos roof we have to be very careful. So, like that um, the quality of the water available what is harvested that also we have to take care. Then uh, what kind of maintenance uh, we have to go for uh, the particular system that depends upon the design. So, whether we go for a very, very good design with all the aspects then the maintenance required will be uh, say maybe once in a year or two times in a year, but if the design is poor may be uh, weekly basis or monthly basis we may have to do the uh, maintenance. And then um, say as far as recharge is concerned when we are uh, designing a recharge structure then we have to see that uh, the hydrogeological aspects. So, that how much water can be uh, put to the aquifer system through various schemes like recharge pit or tube well or bore wells. So, this depends upon the hydrogeology of the area. So, then uh, recharge structures is based on the, uh, the recharge structures are based on availability of space availability of runoff, depth water table and uh, uh, lithology of the uh, area. So, these are some of the important uh, design considerations as far as rooftop rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, now uh, the uh, as far as uh, design uh, criteria say if you are going to do a recharge uh, for a particular area then uh, uh, we have to see the various aspects um, then uh, say the runoff should be assessed accurately for designing the recharge structures uh, and then uh, may be assessed by uh, the following formula which you already seen runoff is equal to catchment area and runoff coefficient into uh, rainfall. And then a runoff coefficient plays an important role in assessing the runoff availability and it uh, and it depends on upon the catchment uh, characteristics. So, uh, this whole issue we have seen in the last lecture. So, depending upon the type of catchment the runoff coefficient uh, uh, varies say for example, depending upon the type of roof this can vary from 0 0.7 to 0 0.9 and then paved area it can vary from 0 0.5 to 0 0.85, bare ground 0 0.1 to 0.2, uh, green area 0 0.05 to 10, 0 0.1. So, like that this runoff coefficients can vary from area to area. So, now uh, say when we are going to for uh, especially for recharging the, the aquifer system. So, we have to design the specific uh, recharge structures. So, we have seen various structures like uh, whether it is a recharge pit or uh, recharging trench or say bore well or dug well. So, like that. So, the cost depends upon uh, various conditions. So, like that uh, the locality the that means in cities the cost may be more in a rural area the cost will be less. Then uh, say what kind of soil or what kind of geological nature as far as when you are making a pit or a trench. Uh, so, the cost of each recharge structures vary from uh, varies from place to place. Uh, say some of the approximate costs I have listed here. So, like recharge pitch it may vary from uh, rupees 2500 to 5000, recharge trench vary from 5000 to 10,000. Uh, so, like that uh, say this is I cannot specifically say that uh, this will be the, the uh, correct cost as far as a structure is concerned. So, this varies from location to location and then depending upon the soil geological and uh, other uh, parameters. So, now uh, within uh, this perspective within the issues which we have discussed. So, now uh, let us see how uh, we can uh, uh, do rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting system. Uh, so, we have already seen there are mainly three components one is the rooftop catchments. So, that uh, what we are uh, say through which what we are the rainfall what we are collecting. So, that is the rooftop ca the catchments and then uh, that is the first component. Then second one is the collection. So, if this is the building then the top of this is the the, uh, the catchments and then collection is uh, we, we have to collect the water through gutters and then through pipelines. So, this is the collection systems. So, that is the second component. So, first one is the catchment, second one is the collection system through pipelines and then third one is the storage system. So, if you are going for direct uh, say storage 
then a tank like this is a ferro cement uh, tank. So, uh, what is the size of the tank and various other uh, say aspects of design of the tank. Uh, so, like that mainly three components one is the, the catchment collection system and the storage system. So, uh, as far as the catchment area, so as I mentioned it is uh, mainly the roof. Uh, so, the catchment area is the surface through which the rainwater runoff is harvested that is the roof. So, water to be used for non drinking purpose can be collected from any type of roof. So, if, if you are going to recharge the to the aquifer system of course, the quality of water should be good. Uh, but to say for example, if you are going to use that collected water for irrigation purposes then we do not have to worry much. So, we can uh, uh, collect the water from any kind of roof. Then water to be used for drinking purposes should however, not be collected from roofs with the damaged asbestos sheets or from roofs covered with uh, asphalt and lead flashings or lead based uh, paints as lead contamination may occur in the collected water. So, uh, so whenever, whenever rainfall takes place it is the pure water, but when, when it uh, say where it falls depending upon the roof type. So, the contamination can take place say for example, if it is a asphalt uh, um, uh, say covered uh, roof or asbestos roof then many components like lead, uh, lead or other heavy metals can um, say mix with the, the rain water. So, that will lead to contamination. So, we should be careful. So, what kind of uh, say roof which we are having and then accordingly we have to decide the, whether that water can be used for domestic purpose or only agriculture purpose or uh, say to, to recharge to the uh, aquifer system. Now, regardless of the roofing material generally a loss of up to 20 percent may take place due to evaporation. Uh, inefficiencies in collection uh, and in inefficiencies in collection processes. So, there is only generally about 80 percent of uh, rainfall can be harnessed through the rooftop uh, catchment system. So, that is uh, generally uh, approximately we can uh, collect about 80 percent of the uh, rainfall uh, say what is coming on the uh, rooftop. So, now uh, say second component is say we have to collect this water from the, the roof and then we have to send through appropriate system. So, either for uh, uh, say storage in a tank or for recharge purpose. So, that uh, the inflow the inflow structures are important. So, some of the important infl inflow structures include gutters. So, this gutter so it is generally on the uh, say on the side of the roof. So, that this gutters collect rain water from the roof and transport it to the inflow pipe. So, you can see that whatever is collected. So, that will be coming through uh, this pipe. So, the gutters could be of various shapes, uh, shapes and uh, shapes, sizes and materials. So, like aluminum or say PVC type or different types are possible as far as uh, gutter, gutter is concerned. And then uh, the, 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 say once the water is flowing through the gutter then we have to collect it through pipe. So, that is so called inflow pipe. So, that this is a, the inflow pipe or this is the inflow pipe coming to the storage tank. So, this is the uh, from the gutter water is coming and then coming through the uh, pipe here. Uh, so, inflow pipe uh, or uh, uh, drain pipe is the pipe which connects the gutter to the filter and then to the tank or to the uh, reservoir. So, the inflow pipe say design you have to do pro appropriately. So, that um, you can see that if this is the water coming through this is the gutter. So, where the water is collected and from the gutter now water is entering to the, the through the pipe. Uh, so, that uh, now that will be uh, coming to uh, a filter or uh, other kinds of system. So, the inflow structure structures uh, are very important. So, we have to design it appropriately. Uh, so, from the pipe uh, say inflow pipe that may the water may go through a, a filter uh, and then that can be uh, either used for storage or for uh, uh, recharge purpose. So, now as I mentioned the filtering is uh, very important since uh, even though say the first um, uh, say the first rain first two three rains we can flush it out. Uh, but uh, still there will be especially in city regions there will be dust and then a uh, lot of other um, bird drop and other things as far as the rooftop is concerned. So, a filter is always needed even if uh, we are going for recharge purpose. So, a filter is uh, to be used when the water is to be 
stored in tanks uh, for direct consumption or whether even if it we are going for uh, recharge. So, we can see that uh, say uh, different types of filters are available. So, you can see that water is collected and uh, through the collection system water is coming to a tank where the filter, filter material is put. So, this is the inflow pipe. So, here uh, this is um, uh, a typical uh, say filter material is put. So, here the this is the filter wall and then uh, fine to coarse sand is put on the top then gravel and just below that and then pebble below that. So, from that now uh, say after the filtration the water will be collected to the, to the tank where the water will be uh, stored for either direct use or for uh, recharge. So, you can see that uh, this filter can be either of this um, sand material or uh, the, uh, the gravel and pebble material like this or we can nowadays uh, in a compact form uh, the filter is available. So, like uh, say for example, one of the scheme here um, we can have a, a module say here this is a module which is put um, in the collection uh, pipe itself say like uh, geotextile or um, uh, PVC type material various materials are available nowadays. So, through which water will be passing uh, for, for uh, storage. So, here um, you can see that um, say this is now the, the water is coming and the, now the flush valve and then uh, the water will be uh, going through the uh, filter system. So, now uh, say when we design the uh, rainwater harvesting as I mentioned the first flush first two three flush we are, uh, as first two three rainfall flush should be should not be allowed to collect or it should not be allowed to recharge since it contains lot of dust and other pollution. pollution. Uh, so, what we can do we can have a uh, valve here. So, that um, uh, say uh, during the when the monsoon or when the rainfall comes we can close this valve and so that first first two three rainfall is consent the the all the collected water will be uh, going through this pipe out. So, that will not be collected at all. So, that is uh, we consider as polluted water and then uh, after two three flushing uh, say um, uh, removing this um, uh, say the water coming from first few rainfalls then we can uh, close the valve towards this and open towards the tank. So, that and the water will be passing through a filter system and then that can be uh, used for storage uh, in tanks or we can use it for the purpose of uh, recharge. And now, uh, so that is uh, say that is the way the design is done. Now, say if you are going to recharge the ground water the, the water to the ground water reservoirs, then uh, for storage in ground water reservoirs the filter uh, in the inflow structure. Uh, say a, a very good filter is not required, but uh, of course, we need to go it should go through somewhat um, uh, a small filter or a sedimentation process. So, the water however, should pass through a desilting pitch before entering the aquifer system. So, you can see that uh, this is our uh, uh, dug well through which we are going to recharge. So, the water is coming inflow is coming like this and there is a desilting pitch and through which the whatever the silt all these things will be setting down here and then the, the pure water will be allowed to go to the dug well where it is allowed to recharge. So, either we can give a filter or we can give a desilting pit like this. So, so that the suspended material settle down before the water is introduced to the aquifer system. Uh, except for the except for the recharge through hand pump or tube well the filter should be uh, constructed. So, if a filter to be given we can give a filter somewhere here. Uh, so, may be after desilting uh, so that um, uh, the, the filter water will be allowed to recharge to the uh, aquifer system. Uh, so, now uh, say we have seen uh, say water water is coming from uh, the, the catchments I mean roof catchment to, through the collection pipes and then after filtration or desilting uh, we can uh, use the water uh, for the purpose of storage or for the purpose of um, recharging. So, if you are going to recharge the recharge different um, uh, say we can use recharge shafts uh, say defect, defend uh, bore wells. Uh, trench with injection wells. Uh, so, like that. So, this is this is a trench and then uh, there are two injection wells within that trench and that will be uh, allowed to uh, recharge the aquifer system. And now, if also uh, the if you are going for collection tanks say for example, you, you can see that now the uh, before the monsoon start this tank will be clean 
um, then uh, the water will be coming through to the tank and that will be stored. Then we can have a pumping mechanism here through which uh, water can be pumped for the purpose what is uh, uh, what we are using for. Underground tanks are designed and constructed in such a way that there is uh, no leakage. So, uh, we have to take care so that the tanks can be either reinforced concrete, ferro cement or PVC type tanks. So, that way depending upon the the, the money which can be spent and the space and then uh, the duration the the, the uh, design consideration we can use particular systems. So, now say as far as storage is concerned so as I mentioned uh, we can have storage tank and then uh, uh, we can um, uh, say use uh, allow the water to uh, go through the the uh, recharge wells dug well uh, abandoned dug well or recharge well or recharge shaft or recharge trench. So, you can see that uh, we can have trenches surrounding the building like this and then uh, also we can abandon the well this is a scheme and then uh, this is a recharge shaft. So, here the, with this uh, the water will be uh, say allowed to recharge to the uh, aquifer system. Now, uh, let us see what is the cost of uh, rooftop based rainwater harvesting system. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, the cost depends upon the location and then also depending upon what kind of design we are planning to do. Uh, so, we can have very uh, good design where the cost may be slightly more uh, or we can go for what kind of say it depends upon how the how much money we can how much capital is there. So, the cost of a rainwater harvesting systems designed as an integrated uh, component of a new construction project generally it will be low. So, now a building is already constructing then in that process if we are planning in advance a rainwater harvesting a rooftop rain based rainwater harvesting system then we can do all the arrangements uh, then uh, while doing the construction itself especially plumbing itself. So, that um, there is the all the uh, say the rains coming from the roof can be put in the appropriate way. So, that that can be uh, our collection systems and uh, designing a system on an existing building is costlier uh, since uh, say if an existing building there is no effective way of collection and uh, uh, say collection of the rainwater, uh, then uh, we have to have a new system to be developed. So, because many of the shared costs like roof and gutters has to be separate as far as the old building is concerned. In general, uh, maximizing storage capacity and minimizing water use through conservation and reuse are import important rules to keep in mind. Uh, so, uh, say uh, we want to maximize the storage and minimize the water use. So, that way and the, the we do the cost analysis. Now, with the careful planning and design the cost of a rainwater system can be reduced considerably. So, we can uh, say we have to do a preliminary analysis of the site and then we have to see how much uh, rainwater is possible to harvest and then um, say we have to design the system appropriately. So, that an appropriate design uh, can reduce the cost considerably uh, as usual for any kind of uh, design is concerned. So, now uh, say the rainwater harvesting uh, methods are spe site specific as I mentioned hence it is difficult to give a uh, generalized uh, cost. So, this depends upon the location and uh, many other parameters, but the first of all the major components of rainwater harvesting system like rain and catchment area are available free of cost. So, which is the most important aspect uh, that is uh, the, the initial the, there is no need of uh, capital as far as rain is uh, taking place uh, naturally and then uh, you are having already the rooftop as the catchment. So, these are already available free of cost only we have to go for the collection system and then we have to go for the storage or the recharge system. So, a good proportion of the expenses would be for the uh, pipe connections as I mentioned especially the the collection uh, of the rainwater and then of course, storage. So, by judiciously fixing up the slopes of roofs and uh, location of rainwater outlets uh, this could be brought down considerably. Uh, however, cost varies widely depending on the availability of existing structures like wells and tanks which can be modified and used for uh, water harvesting. So, if there are tanks are available and then uh, or um, uh, if um, some dug wells are available which we can use for uh, the uh, uh, artificial recharge, then the cost can be considerably uh, reduced. 
Typically installing a water harvesting system in a building would cost between uh, say 3000 to 50000 for building of about 300 square meters. So, this is a say an approximate rate as I mentioned it varies from location to location. Uh, so, it varies say it can be generally between 3000 to 50000. The cost estimates above is for an existing building. So, this is for an existing building. So, when we are doing it for a during the construction then the cost can be uh, again can be reduced. So, for example, the rainwater harvesting system in the, the center for science and environment building in Delhi was set up with a cost of 30,000 rupees, whereas those in the model projects uh, say other projects range from 70,000 to uh, 8 lakhs. So, this uh, drastically varies from uh, location to location. Then the cost would be comparatively less if the system were incorporated during the construction as I already mentioned. Then when community come together to harvest rain uh, per capita cost goes down. Say for example, if there is a housing colony. So, colony wise when we are going for total uh, rainwater harvesting system, uh, then the cost can be considerably reduced. So, since the uh, uh, same scheme can be adopted by all the housing houses in the colony and then uh, even recharge pit, we can have common recharge techniques or filter, filtration is concerned, we can have form, common system. So, like that the cost can be considerably reduced. Say for example, for Panchil Park colony in New Delhi about 1000 residents pulled uh, only rupees 4.5 lakhs to harvest more than 170 million liters of water annually. So, you can see that uh, say thousands residents came together. So, the cost has gone drastically down and then uh, there is a much better uh, rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting system especially uh, say in Delhi area they went for uh, recharging system. Uh, so, now uh, say these are as far as these are the issues as far as the costs are concerned. Now, let us look uh, say some of the safety considerations as far as the uh, rooftop ra based rainwater harvesting is concerned. So, if you are going to store water in a groundwater reservoir, so then uh, uh, for rooftop rainwater harvesting through existing tubers and hand pumps the filter or desilting pit should be provided so that the wells are not silted. So, the existing if you are going to uh, harvest the water and uh, then put to uh, the aquifer systems through existing uh, um, tube wells or bore wells uh, then you should be careful. So, it should be passed through um, uh, say the filtration is essential uh, so that uh, the existing well, wells are not silted. Now, such tubules if pumped intermittently increase the efficiency of recharge. So, it is not only recha recharging through the system in intermittently we can uh, pump out also so that the efficiency of recharge will be increased since some of the silt will be coming out. Then if the groundwater reservoir is recharged through shaft, dug well etcetera, inverted filter may be provided. So, here we can see a system where the water collected and uh, after the sedimentation the it, the water is going through a pipe through a filter and then this is connected to an existing uh, tube well uh, where this tube well uh, the, say sometimes used for uh, say pumping also and uh, whenever rainfall excess rainfall is coming uh, water is coming then that is used for recharge purpose. So, both the dual purpose tube wells this is a dual purpose tube well. So, otherwise we can construct uh, structures uh, like this. So, now uh, instead of uh, recharging say if you are going for storage in tanks some of the important safety consideration which we have to adopt as far as a rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting is concerned. A storage tank should not be located close to a source of contamination such as a septic tank. Then a storage tank must be located on a lower level than the roof to ensure that uh, it fills completely. Then a rainwater system must include installation of an overflow pipe which empties into non flooding area, excess water may be used for recharging the aquifer system through dug well or abandoned uh, hand pump or tube wells. Then uh, you can see that uh, most of the so wherever high intense rainfall is there then the, the flow through the uh, collection pipe will be much higher. So, uh, we have to give a speed breaker plate uh, that is uh, provided below the inlet pipe 
in the filter so as not to disturb the filtering material. So, if the water flow to the filtering material is um, the velocity is very high, then the filtering material will be affected and that itself will be uh, going through with the water. So, we have to provide some uh, speed breaker. Uh, then uh, st a storage tank should be accessible for cleaning, regular cleaning is required say uh, before monsoon definitely one cleaning is required and then uh, depending upon the, the, the recharge uh, or depending upon the use we may have to clean that tank uh, say the storage uh, facility. Then the inlet into the uh, storage tank should be screened uh, in uh, such a way that this can be cleaned regularly water may be disinfected regularly before using for drinking purpose by chlorination uh, or uh, boiling. So, these are some of the important safety consideration as far as the, uh, the rooftop based rainwater harvesting is concerned. Now, some of the uh, operation and maintenance issues uh, here um, I have listed. So, proper operation and maintenance is uh, required, regular inspection and cleaning of catchments, gutters, filters and tanks reduce the likelihood of contamination. So, that is an important point and water from the source should not be mixed with uh, uh, that in the tank. So, um, uh, other sources like if the water supplied through pipes that should not be mixed with the, the harvested rainwater. Then as far as treatment is concerned, treatment of store, stored rainwater only makes sense if it is done properly, if hygienic collection and use of water will ensure and it does not suffer from recontamination. So, recontamination should not take place, uh, we should be careful. And there are several types of treatment possible uh, like chlorination, boiling, infiltration, filtration, and then uh, exposure to ultraviolet, natural sunlight, etc. So, these are some of the operation and maintenance aspects as far as rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting is concerned. Now, before going to, uh, to case studies, let us have a look some of the water quality issues. So, to prevent leaves and debris from entering the system, uh, mesh filters uh, should be provided, uh, especially at the mouth of the drain pipe. Then, uh, the, as I mentioned, the first flush device should be provided in the conduit before it connects to the storage tank uh, containers. So, if the stored water is to be used for drinking purpose, then a sand filter is essential. Uh, then methods to protect rainwater quality include like um, appropriate system design, sound operation and maintenance. Uh, then um, it is extremely important to maintain the rainwater harvesting system regularly for high quality performance. So, the quality depends upon the, the, the um, maintenance uh, of the system. Then uh, some of the tips to ensure a good quality of uh, harvested rainwater include just before the arrival of monsoon, the rooftop and catchment should be cleaned properly. The roof outlet to the stairs should be covered with uh, mesh to prevent entry of leaves uh, and other materials. Then the filter materials have to be either replaced or uh, washed properly. Then the diversion valve has to be opened to the first 5 to 10 minutes to dispose the polluted first flush. The not polluted water should be taken away from the recharge structures. And then the depth of bores shall be finalized depending upon the actual site conditions. So, these are some of the, the water quality issues. Now, say here say if you want to design this is a simple problem uh, say a rainwater harvest system has to be designed for meeting drinking water requirements for 5 member family in a building with a rooftop of 100 square meter. Average annual rainfall in the region is say 600 mm, daily drinking water requirement per person is considered 10 liters. Then uh, here we can see that the catchment area is 100 square meter, rainfall is uh, 0 0.6, collection efficiency 0 0.8, then we can find the average annual water harvesting uh, is 48 cubic meter. So, then uh, say if you consider say for example, uh, about 240 days of dry period, then we can identify how much is to be uh, collected for drinking purpose. So, then if it is given 20 percent uh, extra, then it can be 14,400 liters. So, we have to design uh, accordingly. So, two case studies here I want to present one is uh, the uh, success story of as far as uh, artificial recharge is concerned. So, first one is artificial recharge to ground water using rooftop. So, this is uh, the Shakti Bhavan in New Delhi. Uh, so, the, uh, the campus area is about uh, 12,000 square meter, depth of ground water before recharging was 68 meter below ground level. Uh, so, here this is the system. So, you can see that various through various pipelines are collected and then uh, the uh, they through uh, two injection wells and recharge trench 
the water is uh, infiltrated down to the uh, aquifer system. So, average annual rainfall is about uh, 7 to uh, millimeter, uh, rainfall to runoff approximately calculated 3325 cubic meter. Uh, structure uh, proposed is recharge trench with the two injection wells, expected recharge is about 3000 cubic meter per year. Uh, so, the, uh, the studies in 2007 shows that there is about 1.68 to 3.33 meter rise in the area in ground water table and cost of wa the water was calculated as rupees 7.07 per 1000 liter. So, the total cost when it was implemented by central PWD in 2001 was about 4.1 lakh. So, major benefit proper utilization of available runoff arresting the declining ground water levels in the area and sustainability to existing ground water abstraction structure. So, this is a recharge based case study. Second one is a collection type case study. So, this is in Mumbai Indian Water Works Association campus. So, here um, the storage is done in a ferro cement tank of about 6000 liter and Mumbai rainfall average is uh, 2335 millimeter, the rooftop area is about uh, 300 square meter. So, the design is based upon uh, this data. Then uh, filter material is here, this is the collection system, this is the filter material, the geotextile based uh, system and then uh, the overflowing water for recharge, uh, say water is collected in a tank like this. Uh, so, uh, this water is used for um, toilet flushing as far as the building is concerned. So, this is this water was found to be sufficient for, for monsoon months plus and the one month after the rainfall. So, one month rainfall storage and they could do and the cost was about 96,000. So, this is another di efficient direct rooftop uh, harvesting uh, as far as storage is concerned. So, for today's lecture some of the important references are listed here. Uh, then as a tutorial question, uh, say uh, two questions I have put here, describe the artificial recharge scheme for groundwater improvement with uh, case studies, illustrate the rooftop rainwater harvesting with the help of two case studies for direct use and groundwater recharge. So, you can see number of case studies in central groundwater board website, rainwaterharvesting.org website and CSC India website. So, you can illustrate the system uh, with uh, various schemes and then uh, discuss various techniques adopted and discuss the merits and demerits of each system. So, a few self evaluation questions like uh, discuss the rooftop rainwater harvesting, uh, the, then uh, needs and its importance, how much water can be collected from a rooftop catchment, discuss the important design consideration of rooftop rainwater harvesting system discuss the cost analysis of rooftop uh, rainwater harvesting scheme, describe the operation and maintenance of uh, rooftop rainwater harvesting uh, systems. Uh, then assignment a few questions, describe the methodologies of rooftop rainwater harvesting system, uh, what are the solution strategies for urban rainwater scarcity uh, with the details explain how we can do uh, rooftop rainwater harvesting, uh, what are the important safety consideration in rooftop rainwater harvesting and discuss water quality issues in rainwater harvesting. So, this for the answers for all these questions you will get through if you go through the uh, to, to, to today's lecture. So, finally, one unsolved uh, problem for your uh, residential building where you are staying prepare a master plan for rooftop based uh, rainwater harvesting system. So, you can identify what is the present supply water is coming from where and what is the demand for the, uh, the your building, then uh, you can identify the built up area and check the possibility of direct rainwater harvesting or you can go for uh, uh, recharge. So, collect all the data related to rainfall, soil data, etcetera. Then design an integrated rainwater harvesting system including uh, st some storage in tanks or a uh, some say the option for uh, groundwater recharge. So, with this uh, uh, today's lecture on uh, say um, uh, rainwater harvesting especially rooftop based catchment system is uh, finished. So, now the th module number 3 on uh, the integrated uh, uh, say watershed management schemes also over. Uh, so, we have seen we have got about 4 lectures in this uh, module on uh, introduction to in integrated watershed management. Uh, so, various aspects of the scheme the this uh, module has been discussed in the uh, 4 lectures uh, as uh, we have seen the last 4 lectures. Thank you.